company that, that fails to generate profits and positive cash flow could be acquired for its assets. In the high-tech sector, and Silicon Valley in particular, startups are often acquired for their technology assets. In an asset sale transaction, the buyer is acquiring the technology, the, usually the intellectual property, and often needs to hire the core team on which the technology depends. In these situations, the company is a disposable wrapper for the technology assets. Depending on the state of the company, the buyer may find it easier to acquire the corporate entity rather than each of the individual assets. In assessing value, cash flow based valuation techniques like revenue multiple, earnings multiple and discounted cash flow are inappropriate as the company is not really being sold as a going concern. Build Cost Plus is commonly used by the acquirer. The buyer calculates how much it would cost to build the technology in-house rather than buy it from outside. Don't be surprised to find that a savvy buyer makes an adjustment to the Build Cost Plus valuation to factor in the cost of taking on the dependent team. The valuation in an asset sale always depends on the negotiation process and true to the economic laws of supply and demand with only one buyer the price will often fall to whatever that buyer wants to pay. In calculating the value of the assets the buyer may look at the net asset value essentially the cost of replicating the company or the asset being acquired. The fully burdened costs are used not merely the salaries of the engineering team deployed on the project. So the cost of offices, management support, telephones, IT and all the related costs of the buyer are factored into the estimation of the net asset value. As we mentioned in a previous slide, the seller will argue that time to market is of substantial value. The buyer may be able to reverse engineer the product but the time involved may force the buyer to miss the window of market opportunity today. By the time the buyer has reverse engineered the product, the competition would have moved on and the product may be obsolete by the time it's introduced. In our example, if the buyer estimates the build cost at $2 million and two years of development, the seller may argue that the value today is $6 million after applying a time to market multiple of three. If the seller holds patents, the build cost valuation approach may be irrelevant as the buyer would be infringing the patent claims by reverse engineering the inventions. A patent is a right to exclude others from practicing the claims of the invention disclosed in the patent. It provides the right to ask the court to force infringers to pay a reasonable royalty and or issue an injunction preventing future infringement. So the marketability and value of the patent depends on its infringement status. You may have noticed that this description of a patent focuses on legal issues and does not mention the strength or maturity of the underlying technology. This is because the technology is a different asset to the patent, although the two can be related. When you're selling the patent, you're not selling a right to use the technology what you're selling is the right to prevent others from developing technologies using the patented invention. Understanding this point can help eliminate confusion surrounding the sale of patents. The following valuation reflects actual buying activities seen by brokers in the United States and worldwide and include the thousands of listings syndicated on the Tynax Technology Trading Exchange where patents are traded. The valuations reflect the sale of a large proportion of the patents sold in the marketplace during recent years and these prices apply to issued United States patents. Group A, patent value is zero. Patents that are expired or otherwise found invalid have no value. As roughly half of litigated patents are found to be invalid by the court, a large number of issued patents fall into this category and they're actually worth zero when they're found to be invalid. 
Group B represents patents with a value of ten to thirty thousand dollars each. These are valid US patents that do not have particularly broad claims, they're not in a particularly large market, have no licensees, and have not been litigated. Moving up to Group C, the patent value is in the region of thirty to one hundred thousand dollars per issued US patent. If the patents have broad claims or the market is particularly strong and growing, then the price of unlitigated patents can increase towards the six-figure range. Group D is patents with a value of $100,000 to $500,000 each. Where multiple competing buyers bid to acquire a patent with strong claims and applications in a large growing market, the price can rise to several hundred thousand dollars per US patent. Moving up to Group E, some patents are valued at half a million to one million dollars each. Generally the patents that sell for mid to high six figures are those that have been litigated and won, and where there are known infringers. The price is justified by the potential royalty stream from such infringers. Group F, there are some patents that are valued at $1 million plus. These are patents that have been successfully litigated, battle tested in the courts with identified Fortune 500 infringers that can sometimes bring a price in excess of $1 million each. In Group G, these are industry standard patents. A very small number of industry standard patents will sell for low to mid seven figure sums. These prices are generally justified by the huge strategic advantage such a patent offers the owner, together with a long term potential royalty stream from infringers' licensees. Industry standard patents can be found in certain high-tech sectors, especially pharmaceuticals and medical or biotech areas. As you can see, a totally different set of valuation criteria is used when selling patents, and the value has no relation to the performance of the company or the strength of the underlying technology. Patent valuation is driven by infringement and potential royalties from licensing.